Thanks for staying with us for For the Record. Joining us now is Michael Brown, Executive Director of Sustaining Way, and Megan Salm, Sustainable Education Coordinator. Thank you so much for being here. For people who don't know, tell us about your organization. Sustaining Way started in Greenville County in 2012. Every day we seek to use education and collaboration to help create sustainable and equitable communities. Uh, we've traditionally worked in marginalized communities like Nickel Town here in Greenville as well as New Washington Heights and we are even working on the south side of Spartanburg. And the goal is what? To help people uh, when we talk about the the term sustainability just to live uh, a little bit more affordably, mm -hmm. uh, to have certain type of impacts in their lives in which they can see transformation along the lines of anywhere from healthy eating uh, to impacting uh, what they're doing in terms of just their energy usage needs. Uh, we, we try to address all those things and just try to make life just a little bit better for everyone. Yeah, and Megan, talk to me a little bit about what the impact you have per home in the community. Yeah. yeah, we have quite a few different programs targeted to the residents. Mm -hmm. um, one big thing that we do is on site we have a full um, sustainable garden where we grow lots and lots of different mm -hmm. fun foods and every week we give those out to residents at our meals and masks program so people can come and get free fresh produce um, we also have energy home visits where we will pop into people's homes and give them tips on how to lower their energy burden, lower their energy bill, that kind of thing. Let's go back to the garden real quick. Mm -hmm. You know, with today alone, we've talked about eating healthy. We've talked about being physically active and, and working out. When people think about a garden, mm -hmm. I don't have a green thumb. So give me some some things that I could plant that goes much farther than just pulling it out of the ground. Well, when you, when you think about some of the common things that you know we always talk about uh, that you want to be able to take from farm, you hear the term farm, farm to table, table. Yeah, always. Yeah. Things like, think of a cherry tomato, mm. uh, a, a low input, or as, as we say, uh, a low type of uh, vegetable, which tomatoes really are fruits, but right. people think of <laughs> Uh To plant a seed that really just takes just a little bit of care sprouts from something so small, stems out, and it just re requires just some periodic watering. Yeah. That can complement any type of meal that you could prepare, whether it's going to be the preservation of that tomatoes or a number of tomatoes uh, through some of our canning uh, classes that we, we teach the community. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you have canning classes as well? <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. What? Tell me about that. Well, some of the traditional uh, ways that we've learned from our grandmothers, yeah. our great-grandmothers, yeah. uh, we, we do address some of that. And I know Megan was recently involved in what we were doing at a local community center in Nickel Town uh, to help do some of those canning uh, classes as well. Yeah, tell me about that because it, it's, you can grow it, mm -hmm. but then you got to eat it. But mm -hmm. if you can figure right. out ways to can and, and, and save stuff for later. Exactly. Yeah, so education is a huge part of Sustaining Way. I'm the Sustainability Education Coordinator. And so we have all sorts of different educational programmings, one of which recently was a food preservation workshop mm -hmm. where we had a community member who was an expert in canning, has been doing this for years, and she came over to our community center and taught a little workshop on how people can preserve their food. It was awesome. So you could do it without all the chemicals that Oh are... yeah. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. Can anyone do it? We've seen yeah. it. I mean, yeah. from from young and old. I mean, we had a number of seniors uh, who have grown accustomed to some of the modern ways of having the convenience of having a local mm -hmm. food provider uh, either bring food to their homes or fast food. We seek to to change that paradigm and get back to some of the healthier ways. And so just for a few minutes to prepare uh, items that literally will go into the old mason jars mm -hmm. and then the, uh, the putting some solution in there. Well, it's water uh, that's heated up and that, that magic seal technique, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's all very simple. You mentioned something just now, fast food. And I know what you meant when you said it, but it got me thinking, it is for someone who has $5, it is so easy to go and use that $5 to buy food that will not sustain you, mm -hmm. make you healthier. 
thinking farm to table, that $5 in many places, many restaurants won't get you far at all. It's a change of a mindset and a change of, of how you go about and look at food, right? Mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that could help. Absolutely. And it could be generational too. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you think about some of the opportunities that we try to uh, educate our communities on, it really becomes a collective opportunity. You take some of the small backyard gardens that we literally uh, help people install, uh, whether it's uh, the cucumbers in one yard, mm -hmm. squash being grown in another, watermelons or some type of uh, local, you know, culturally appropriate, as we say, right. fruit or vegetable that we know the community uh, can take and use. You go from household to household, you have a chance to have a collective opportunity to do what we did in olden times. And it's fresh, mm -hmm. and it's directly out of your backyard, and then most importantly, it's healthy. And it's an excuse to make a big table of food with all <laughs> that all your neighbors help make, and then yeah. eat together Absolutely. and break bread Absolutely. together as well. Thank you so much for being here and sharing these ideas. Well, still to come on For the Record, a South Carolina man is giving back even after his death. But I'm glad that, that he has saved Joe's life. He, Neil was a giver. Next, the family of an organ donor meets the man who's breathing easier today because of their love and what that has to do with New Year's celebrations.